there's more to editing photos than just applying a filter or two in your favorite social sharing app. And while scrolling through a list of pre-rolled looks, it can yield some great results very quickly. They're not necessarily gonna to help to rescue a photo that needs a bit of reframing or, or, or is a bit blurry. And it's not gonna help a good photo look fantastic. That's where it's worth investing just a little bit of time in learning how to edit photos properly using a photo editing app. Thankfully, there are loads of those all over the various app stores, but a really good one might already be built into your phone. Let's take a look. You don't need to rush to the App Store because many phones have actually got basic correction tools built in. Let's take a look here. So if you go into the normal camera app, you get a thumbnail of pictures you've just taken. Let's have a look here. So here's a picture I took a few moments ago of a, of a Russian dolly. What this has actually done is opened it in the Google Photos app. Now this is available for most phones and it gives you a way of displaying, of uh, backing up and also of editing your shot. So let's take a look at what it lets us do. The key is this little slider icon just here. Tap on that and the first thing it shows us are, guess what, a number of filters. Uh, filters are everywhere, it seems, in smartphone apps. And um, what I like to do, you see there's a good number of filters there, some black and white, some heavily saturated, but what I like to do, what I like to do is to tap on auto, first of all, just to see what its, uh, its magic wand does to the picture. If I don't like it, then I can go back, but I like to see what the phone's own intelligence thinks is the best thing for my picture. And in this case, I think it's done a pretty good job because my Russian dolly was a little bit backlit, lighting wasn't ideal, so the auto mode has just lifted the Russian dolly up a little bit, made it stand out, and that's actually better for me than what I had before. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick with that. But, obviously there's more than that. If I tap again on the faders icon, I now get the ability to mess around with the light a little bit. So, I can make it a little bit more, a little bit less saturated. I can adjust the lights, and I can see that's kind of most of what it did in its correction. So let's just bump the color up a little bit. And you see these little drop downs here, you can tweak it even further. So I can make it a little bit warmer. You see it's brought in those, those yellows and those reds. If I want to make it black and white, I can by adjusting the saturation all the way down to zero. Or if I want to make it, oh, I, almost hurts your eyes with that much colour up there. I'll just bring this back to somewhere a bit more sensible. So that's colour. We've also got the same thing with light here as well. So you can adjust the exposure, the contrast, the whites, the highlights. You can introduce a vignette. Not so keen on that vignette. Change the blacks a little bit. So when you take pictures, sometimes the blacks can be a little bit washed out. You can muddy it up by bringing it up, but actually just by bringing the blacks back a little bit, you see how the blacks become a little bit washed out, turn a bit greyer. What that's actually done is washed the whole picture out and almost made it, made a kind of dreamlike quality to this picture that I think is quite fetching. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick with that. So once you've finished playing around with the colours and with the lighting and saturation and so on, Google Photos also lets you change the framing. So you can just adjust the frame freehand if you like, and you see it brings up the, the guides, the rule of thirds guide. But what you can also do is select some aspect ratios. So for example, I can go with square. Now this is gonna force whatever I do freehand now, it's gonna force it to be a square. And that's good now because I can line up my Russian dolly subject right into the middle of this shot, again, using those guides. And that there 
I think is actually a better picture than the one I took. I haven't done too much to it, but that's pretty good. The other thing that you can do is fine adjustments on the angle. So my, just twist it around minus three or four degrees. You know, we're not talking 90 degree increments that you see with some apps. This is just very minor adjustment to make sure your verticals are vertical and your horizontals are flat as well. That, that is good for me. Tap on done and then tap on save. And there we are, there is the finished item. Again, that's not gonna be something that ever ends up on the mantelpiece, but I had good fun editing it, and I took a photo that was okay, and I've made it into something quite a lot more pleasing, just by playing around with a few different settings. Let's take a look now at a photo editing app that gives us tons of creative options for uh, playing around with our photos. It's called Snapseed. And as you'll see, it's actually owned too by Google. That wasn't always the case. This app's been around for years and Google liked it so much they went and bought it. When you open it up, very simple, tap on the screen to open a picture. So let's, let's have a look at a picture that I took of, of a friend earlier on and see if we can edit that and improve it. How about this one here? There we are. So when you open a picture, again, like many apps, the first thing it presents you with is an armful of filters. So just have a look at what's there. There's lots of black and white filters here. You can add your own filters too. Just take a look at portrait and see what that does. You can undo all of these filters if you don't like them. Portrait, what that's done is just apply a bit of a vignette around the outside. I don't mind that actually, I'm gonna stick with that. So the real fun with Snapseed comes when you move past the style filters and go to tools instead. And you are presented with dozens and dozens of just little things that let you tweak and tune your image to your heart's content. So let's go to tune image first of all in the top corner. And how Snapseed works, how the user interface works, is actually very simple. You swipe up or down on the image to change the setting, get a little context setting here. Let's say we want to change the, how about brightness? And then you swipe left or right to adjust that value. So again, if I swipe up and let's go to saturation this time, and then swipe left, we'll take the saturation down and turn it into a black and white picture. And then swiping all the way right will make it so colorful your eyes bleed. So I don't quite want that. but I'll Let's bring up the saturation. Actually, I'm going to bring the saturation down a little bit because the background here is just a little bit green for my liking. So there we go. Tap on tools. Let's see what else we've got. Curves. So curves are an advanced way of editing the light levels and even for individual colors within a photo. So just to show you a little bit how it works, we have all colors select at the moment. So I'm adjusting the overall brightness and darkness of the image. You can see you can make it really contrasty, really, really moody by making all of the darker colors, turning them to black, basically. Or you can wash it out by lifting all of the darks. And the darks are at the lower end of the curve here. And again, that might be, you can almost turn it into like a photo negative effect if you play around with those like that. With curves, I find it's it's best to experiment, you know, see what looks you like and just play. What I'm gonna try and do is to bring that green down just a little bit more. I find the green just over the shoulder here, a little bit off-putting. So, rather than all of the, all of the color channels, I can just select the green color channel I'm just going to see if I can bring that lightness down just a touch. You see, I can ever so slightly. And what that's doing is it is introducing a, a colour cast on the image that I'm not too happy with. By taking away the greens, it's making it a little bit more purpley, a bit redder. So I need to be careful how much I do that. There we go. Super. Now, Snapseed is really, really powerful in some fun ways. So this is the perspective tool, and this lets me adjust the angle at which I took 
the photo. Of course, it's all post-processing. There's no actual magic happening here, but when you're swiping and scrolling, it does look pretty spooky. So what I'm going to do is just swipe from left to right, and that's essentially tilting the image as though I, if I wanted to get a little bit further around just to make sure I was straight on, but I didn't do that when I took the picture, this might work for you. So let's just see the effect. Look at that. It's as though I am moving around the image a little bit. Now it is warping some of the background here, which might or may or may not be what you want, but actually I can make it look as though I was straight onto my subject rather than off to one side. That's quite fun. I like that. And then you can move around all different bits of it again if if you're a bit too close to the hands and you want the hands to be a little bit smaller, you can do all of that stuff. Lots of fun to be had with this. As always, experiment, experiment, have fun and try it out. Now, there's another couple of effects I want to take a look at, but for those I'm going to need to take a look at a landscape picture instead. So let me open that up. Now, I'm a big fan of urban landscapes, and in particular, I like applying a couple of effects that really bring out the drama in the sky. Snapseed has a drama effect for people like me. So just by enabling that, and you can see what's happened to the sky. Again, if I just do before, before and after, it's brought a sense of menace to the sky. These clouds look as though they're about to unleash wrath upon us all. I'm gonna make that filter strength up to its maximum 100%. But also what the drama effect does is to desaturate the image a bit. I quite like it when it's got some colour. So remember, we just swipe up to saturation and swipe right a bit more. And you see the orange on these bricks has really come out. If the sky was a bit bluer, I could have brought a bit more of that out as well. But instead we've got what looks like some metallic structures in there. This image was good before I started with it. All I've done here is apply my own personal tastes to it to, uh, I guess, have another take on the picture, but that's definitely the kind of thing I would share on my social networks. Editing photos and apps, it's a lot of fun. Explore, experiment, because that's really what it's all about. But I think that the best tools for editing photos, you can't really download them from any app store because it's your eyes. It's looking at a scene, thinking about it before you even get there and executing on that. Editing in camera before you press that shutter button will save you so much time when it comes to trying to make them even better in apps like this. So experiment, explore, but most importantly, have fun.